Yo, this is Alex Mon for Destiny. I'm Phil from Phil Will Exposed. And today we're going to be talking about how to raise the overhead press. The ultimate guide. Because you see a lot of people that are interested in the bench. Uh, the bench is really, that's all we really see in the powerlifting world, even the strength training world in general. But no one talks about how to raise the overhead press. Now, with my belief system as well as Phil, we believe that the overhead press is a very important lift for making you look very jacked. Specifically in the shoulders, the upper back, as well as the long head of the triceps. And it's just a great strength builder overall. So we're going to be giving you the ultimate guide, the A to Z, everything you need to know about raising your OHP. So whether you're doing 135, 95, whatever, you can at least get to two plates if you follow the advice that we're about to give. So let's break it down. Yeah, so most people who go to the gym who are trying to look jacked, the number one question that they get asked is how much do you bench? In my opinion, that's not the right question you want to ask. It's either the better question, in my opinion, is how much do you row or how much do you overhead press? As far as upper body lifts, you know, a rack pull could probably be in there too, you know? Yeah, yeah. But how much could you press, which is actually the original name of the overhead press. It was just called the press, you know? Like that's, that's what it was called back in the day. Mm -hmm. That's the more appropriate question. So today we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. We're gonna, we're gonna break it down. First things first, if you wanna get good at any lift, you need to understand that you can't just be doing that lift all year long. These whole minimalist systems, they only give you minimal, minimalist results. It doesn't work like that. Could you get good, re could you get okay results from that? Yeah, probably. But do you have a friend who probably overhead presses a lot and he just does it every week throughout the years? And he, Curious, probably, yeah, but it doesn't yeah, matter. It's yeah. not optimal. That's right. I mean, look, I know there's some people who could do that. They could run really minimalist programs, but these are really the outliers, the genetic outliers. Yeah. Most of you, you have average genes, you know, average leverages. So you got to be taking got information from guys who either had shittier genetics than you or average. Don't take from the best of the best because their advice doesn't apply to you. Just because they can get away with doing one movement for the rest of the year and they're making gains doesn't mean you could do it too. All right? That's like trying to ask... Uh, Arnold for advice when he was 16 years yeah. old. It would be stupid, all right? So, I'm gonna cut you off right yeah. there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of some of these myths that I've been reading about on the internet. So the first myth is that the f overhead press, along with its variations, only build the front delt. This couldn't be any further from the truth. If you watch, even Megan, if you're watching this, shout out to Megan, you're awesome. <laughs> if you do a lateral raise, right? Do a lateral raise, just grab, take your left hand, grab your right shoulder, do a lateral raise. You feel the lateral head working. Now, do the same thing, but do it for a shoulder press. It's a similar movement pattern. You feel the lateral head working. Sure, there's probably a lot of front delt, but to say that you don't get any front uh, side delt stimulation from shoulder press variations is ignorant. Yeah. You, uh, you even get some rear delt stimulation if you do like behind the neck and certain other variations. I, I would agree with that statement. In fact, when you lock weights out, there's a lot of rear delt there they have to isometrically contract obviously and when you're doing dumbbell pressing in particular the weight is out in the sides all right it's not going to be directly over here in line with your head okay it's going to be really out to the side and this does in fact work the side delts yeah. there's also an exercise called the wide press right where you're yeah. pressing like all the way out sideways in the diagonal angle yeah. well that is simulating the side delts and the same thing could be said about standard overhead pressing with dumbbells in addition there are a multitude of exercises that you can do which is going to refine this, those delts even more. Like Viking press, because it's a neutral grip, it trains your delts a little bit differently. Behind the neck will hit the rear and the side very, very effectively. Yeah. And then you also have uh, other exercises like machine presses and stuff like that. Which, again, if you do all the variations that we're talking about, you're going to get the delts you're looking for. You yeah. see, it's all these fucking guys who, they're doing uh, lateral raises with 20 pounds. They're stating that that's all you have to do to get big delts. But I highly disagree. I say, build the cake, ice it later. And what does that mean? It means this. Get a strong overhead press. In particular, strong at all the variations that we're talking about. Exactly. And then you can start isolating with all these uh, special little moves. And that's what's going to give you the three delts you're looking for. Exactly. So that was the first myth. The second myth is that you, you can't get capped delts. You can't get the cap look. Now, I understand the 3D look, like the 3D shredded big delt look. It may be, it may be a bit hard, you know? If you especially have a terrible, don't have the good genetics, you know. But as yeah. far as the cap look, getting that like, you know, you can definitely get a cap to one hundred percent. The reason why most people don't get that cap look is because they're weak as shit. Yeah. They spend all their time benching, and they'll just make the overhead press an afterthought. That's right. You know, they they bench twice a week, and maybe at the end of the workout, if they have a bit of energy left, they'll do like a half-ass dumb set of dumbbell presses, you know. Exactly. And they don't even go ha all the way down either. Yeah. They'll, they'll just do they'll a half reps. Half, they're working more tricep than anything else, you know. Yeah. So it's like, that's another thing too, like, um, you want to, I'm going to talk about partial lifts later on, but you also, you want to make sure you're going down. If you're doing a dumbbell press, the dumbbells are already blocky to begin with, so. 
going down here is fine. Exactly. It makes no sense to do half reps with really heavy weight. Like I see guys bragging about how strong they are. Like they're doing 100 pounds in the dumbbell press, right? But 100 pound dumbbells, anyone who's ever used them, they're rather thick. They're, they're like big, this. Yeah, they're, they're like big. this thick, bro. So if you're doing 90 degrees and you have that extra thickness, dude, that's like a quarter rep. Literally a quarter rep, like an inch of range of motion. It's nothing. That's not going to give you delts that you're looking for. And that's one of the things that naturals complain about. I can't build my delts because uh, I have bad genetics and I'm natty. No, 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 no. I have narrow clavicles or whatever. It's all is. bullshit. You can build great delts if you use full range of motion, proper form, and proper... By the way, speed is still proper form. Okay, A lot of these guys have this misconception that yeah, you've got to yeah. slow and control. No, that doesn't matter. If you're doing the full range of motion, you're going through all the joint angles required of the exercise, then it is proper form uh, point final. If you're not using leg drive as well, it's proper form. So if you're doing full range, right, all the way up, down and up, you're going to be fine. Yeah. So back to what we we're saying. So exercise rotation. So uh, you need to rotate lifts, right? Now, the amount of times you're going to rotate lifts is going to vary from person to person. Alpha, he's more advanced. He rotates lifts once once every week. Every week, yeah. Every week he changes. Except except for lower back and abs. I keep that in fucking year round because yeah. it's so effective, you know? Definitely, yeah. Me, personally, I rotate my... Uh, I have a multitude of uh, vertical presses in all my, all my programs, but I'll stick with those. Let's say if in one program that I have, I'll have like, I don't know, six vertical presses a week. I'll stick with that for three weeks. It's working for me, you know. Then as I get more advanced, I'll change it every two weeks. Then as I get more advanced, I'll probably change it every single week, you know. But that's important, you know. So it's like if you're like, I don't know, you're overhead pressing a, a plate, you don't need to rotate right. it every week. You yeah, know what yeah. Saying? And, and let me touch about that as well. A lot of novice lifters, they're going to try to copy what I'm doing in the gym and they're just going to screw up completely because another thing, depending on your training experience, the variations that you do will have to change as well. Uh, for yeah. instance... You don't need band presses if your overhead press is 95 pounds. You, you simply don't. Any straight weight movement is going to be fine. Just the basics is going to be fine. Milk it for all it's worth, you know. Milk it, you know. Uh, I would say bands become more important when you're like late, intermediate, early, advanced. Like that's when I started using them, you yeah. know. Uh, and I feel that's how you benefit the most. Yeah, Looking, I'm doing a 205, um, 205. for a double uh, shoulder press. And I'm not, I never even use bands, you know. I'm, I'm probably going to use them when I get past the two plate mark, 250 mark. You yeah, know? so once he hits like two plates, he's going to start using bands. And that's yeah. going to take it to around 250. So it's about playing your cards right, you know. So if you're a beginner, uh, don't think that you have to rotate like these crazy lifts. You know, you, you don't. You can keep it rather basic. But keep as you basic. get more advanced, then you need more screwed up variations. Like I've been experimenting with landmine presses while sitting on the floor. Z landmine Land Z-Press. Z -press. I would have never done that in the past, but now I'm starting to use every tool in the toolbox, if you will. Yeah, so the, the rule of thumb is the stronger you get, the smarter you have to get. You know? <laughs> That's you right. Can't, the smarter your program has to get. You can't just try to milk it, like, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so that we got that out the way. Now I want to talk about frequency. So if you want to get good at something, it only makes sense that you have to do it more often. If you play basketball, are you really going to get a good three-pointer by working on it once a week? No, you have to do it very often. In my case, I do full body, naturally enhanced style, three days a week. You know, I'll have my Monday intensity, Wednesday, uh, super high volume. Then I'll have my Friday, which I do just like moderate rep volume work. It's slightly different from alphas. Mm. But I'm, uh, I'm doing a bunch of variations. I'm doing shoulder pressing throughout the week, you know. I'm not just, this isn't some shit where you're just doing it once a week. You're training overhead pressing four times a month. No, no I'm no. doing it three days a week. So that means I'm getting like, what, 12 overhead pressing sessions a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? I also want to bring up that uh, you have to run an overhead press specialty program. You can't be the jack of all trades. We've said this a million times, Phil and I, you know. If you try getting the best bench possible, it means you're not going to have the best OHP possible. Definitely. So yeah, you have yeah. to decide, do you want a big overhead press? Like, I stopped benching all, like, all together. Completely. And it's still hard to raise the, the overhead press. So imagine if I yeah. was benching like crazy and doing a little bit of OHP work on the side. It wouldn't give you the most effective results possible. So you have to really treat yeah, it. Yeah. You got to emphasize it, man. Vertical pressing, high frequency, that's the best way to go yeah. about it. Yeah, I kind of got into a little argument with my buddy. He's like, oh, I can't be a good bencher and a good uh, overhead presser. I'm like, you could be good at both of them, but you could only be great at one of them, you know? Yeah, at least in one cycle. For the most part, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking about we're, yeah. we're talking about the progression of strength. Exactly, cycle, exactly. You know? But if you want to be a master, I, I don't think it's... You got to prioritize. You you gotta, you gotta, you're going to have to choose one, you know? Because if you try doing too much shit, it's going to affect your recovery. You're going to have to lower frequency. It's, a lot of things are going to happen, you know? It's like if strongman competitors all, all of a sudden started, wanted, started to want to um, become really good benchers. 
It's going to affect the it's shoulder gonna, presses. For sure. Because the shoulders need to recover. You know, yes. you can't just do horizontal presses, max effort all the time, and then you just do like, you got to pick. It, it's specificity of training. And train this, what you want to get better at. This brings me to my next point now. So a lot of people, they, they talk about, okay, they want a bigger shoulder press. So they get it mixed up. They're like, um, we're just going to do low volume. We're going to do low volume. We're going to do low reps. You know, we do a lot of singles, a lot of triples. You want to do that. You want to you wanna creep into that lower zone to get your nervous system and your body used to those heavier weights. But you don't want to make the same mistake that I made where you're neglecting high reps and extremely high reps. So it's not enough to just be doing like the one to five rep range and like the six to eight. That's right. You know, you need, you need the 10 to 20, you know. You need volume training. That's it's as simple as that, you know. It's going to improve your work capacity. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get you bigger shoulders, you know. It's true. And I, I find that for at least overhead pressing, high reps really, really work well. Oh, like for I, sure. I found that doing even reps of 20 with the light weight increases my overhead press. You know, it over because the, the delts fatigue rather quickly, in my opinion. They fatigue very, very quick. And if you do, if you don't do the high reps, you're just gonna shortchange your gains. So I, I think high reps are very, very beneficial. Like experiment, you know, it doesn't have to just be eight to twelve. It could be fifteens, it could be twenties, it could even be above that if you want. Like yeah, you yeah, want your accessory sure. work, you can do like reps of fifty. Why not? For sure, for sure. It's all gonna raise your work capacity. It's gonna make you a better overhead presser. But you have to have both days, right? Yeah. Just like the bencher, like let's take a west side bencher, right? They'll have uh, max effort and dynamic effort. All the, these two days crisscross every yeah. seventy-two hours, which gives them the best performance gain on the bench. The same thing applies to the overhead press. You want to have volume and intensity mixed in. Exactly. You can't be such an ego lifter that you think like, because oh, I, I personally, I'm not going to lie. I used to think like, I used to just not want to like bring the weight down, you know? So on my volume day, I was supposed to be getting sets of eight. I would just be like, fuck it. I'm just going to settle for some five. So I was just doing intensity all the time. And I was shortchanging my progress. Because look, think about it like this. If you're 12 rep max, or you're 15 rep max, or you're 12 rep, rep max improves, it's gonna affect your one rep max, and it vice will, versa. It will to a certain extent. To a certain extent. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously the force velocity relationship of weights doesn't fully carry over there, but in the long run it kind of does. You know. For sure. Yeah. Because the work capacity. It's all benefits. intertwined. You know. For it's, sure. it's it's intertwined. You you have to you have to try it out to understand what I'm saying. You know. You know. If you the more the lazier you get on volume work, the more it's gonna affect your overhead pressing strength for the worse. Mm -hmm. So you have to include both. Yeah, yeah. So these were like some very general guidelines but now we're gonna dive into some very deep ones okay so i've been studying a lot of strongman competitors you know watching documentaries interviewing a lot of strongman guys you can even check out my site the fit world blog talk to guys like kale beck like the guys best in the business even some guys who are on the world's strongest man on tv and uh, i asked them a lot of questions and i learned from them you know and one thing that i've noticed that all the um, the world's strongest pressures do is that they do a lot of thick bar work and when I say thick bar, I'm not talking like a, uh, an inch and a half. I'm talking like three inch axles, you know. They use really thick axles. And if you notice, most of the gyms that these strong man, men train at, it doesn't even look like a gym. It looks like an abandoned warehouse, you know. Mm -hmm. It looks like... A lot of weird stuff in there. A lot of weird stuff. So you'll notice like they're used to having like these really thick like uh, Coke bottle handles, even thicker, you know. Mm -hmm. They're used to that. Then sometimes every now and then they'll go into the gym. And then you'll see them like they're used to the fat handles. Then they, they grab like you know the one inch. Mm -hmm. It looks like it looks like they're just doing cardio. They're just pressing it. <laughs> it's like a joke to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think as a drug free lifter, if, if you want to maximize your overhead press, you want to really get it to that limit, you have to do some thick bar training. You know, you have to. It's essential. Yeah, and I found the truth through experience as well. Like if I do a uh, hundred pound dumbbells with one arm, I could do a hundred right on my right side. But if I try using like a two or three inch handle. I'm down to like 75 because it, there's just, it's hard to explain, but the thick handle, it's hard to overhead press when you have that thick handle and it does have carryover. I wouldn't say the supplies to the bench as much, but for overhead pressing, yeah, there's yeah. definitely some merit to it. Yeah. And the thing I like about using thick handles is like, let's say you use bands, right? The bands, you, you, you attach bands under the power rack, whatever, they'll accommodate the resistance at the top. Yeah. Your lockout's going to improve with the fat grips on the other hand. The fat grips don't improve one particular part. They improve the whole lift. So when you go back to the thin handle, the whole lift just feels smoother, you know? I understand what you're saying. You know it's, what hard, saying? it's hard to explain it to the viewers if they haven't done it themselves, but you guys have to compare the two. Like, do a, a one-arm dumbbell press with a super thin handle and then do it with a thick handle. You'll immediately recognize the difference. So it's something you have yeah, to... Yeah. It's like a, t a form of tacit knowledge, if you will. Yeah. You, have to, you have to experiment to understand it. For the thick handle work, you could do it, you can make it a main movement in your program. You put it on your intensity day. Or you could just make an assistance lift, or you could just put on your volume days, you know. But whatever you do, you want to always implement some thick handle work into your program. 
And not just on one or two exercises. You want to have it on a multitude of different exercises, multitude of different rep ranges. It's super important. And when you think about it, even the landmine press, isn't that a thick handle of some sort? It's a thick handle too, yeah. yeah. And it does it carries over pretty well, if you ask me. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's important. And, and also, like, uh, this for the long haul too, you know, like, uh, you just want to keep having it. And you want to progressively work up to the, he to the, to the thickest handle, you know. I, I'm pr I pretty much milked a 2.5 handle. Mm -hmm. Now it's like I'm gonna order the three inch, you know. I think three inch is the highest one. Yeah. yeah. Three inch, like it's. it's thick. Most companies they'll sell three inch. Yeah, the three inch is thick. Like yeah. You can't even wrap your. Yeah, and guys, if you have access to an axle, the better, you know. Yeah, make yeah, you, yeah. Please make make use of it. Or if you don't have thick bars at all, just wrap a towel around it. It's gonna make it more thick. Problem solved. You could do that too, yeah. So it's like, okay, so we went over the thick bar training. Now I want to talk about partial reps. So. If you want to bring up your overhead press, you need to be, you can't always do full range of motion, in my opinion. You need some partial reps in there. You could accommodate with it, but you could accommodate with bands too. Mm. It's going to like, you know. Uh, that, that's how I do it personally. Change, that's how he does it. But you do, you, that's not to say that you can't benefit from some partial lifts with straight weight, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and partials doesn't necessarily mean doing quarter reps. It could also be changing heights in the pin. Like, for instance, I do a lot of Z presses, right, where I'm sitting down on the floor uh, and I'll rotate, like, I'll change the heights every single week. Like, one week I might do it, like, really, really low on the chest. Another week I'll do it at the chin. Another week maybe at the nose. And I'll alternate, like, three different pin heights and it's going to radiate uh, downwards in both yeah, directions yeah. and it makes my overhead press stronger as a whole. It does, so it's yeah. important to do different ranges of motion. You can't just be doing, um, like, full range all the time. You, you can't, know? you can't. You have, to you have to press off different pin heights. That's very essential. Yeah, you could do the you could do Paul Anderson's progressive uh, range of motion method. I think it's very very effective. You could do you can yeah. even do it for Z presses too. You know, you could just like uh, one week you start really high, you're just doing like quarter yeah, reps. Yeah, yeah, you could slowly bring keep, it down by the pin heights. Keep going all the way down to like your neck. You know, it works. I find that progressive range of motion. Since I be started implementing it into my training, I found it really really helped. Like I've used it extensively on rack pulls. It does carry over. Let, let me tell you, it does. It really it does, does. It does. And the same applies to overhead press. Like some weeks, like my strength. Off the chin, it used to be, like now it's the same strength off my chest. I've matched it. I've increased the range of motion this much, but now it's the same strength. You understand? So I got stronger because of using uh, progressive range of motion. Yeah, yeah. If you're also, if you watch uh, Christian Thibodeau, one of my favorite coaches personally, um, he's big on partial movements with thick bars. It's like when he has certain clients and he wants them to improve their overhead pressing strength, he won't just do like, you know, uh, a Z press, from like above the forehead, you'll do it like a C press above the forehead with the fat handles or with the axle bar in its gym, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're getting that extra overload, you know, in all regards. For sure. You know, so it's important. So, uh, uh, Bud Jeffries. Yeah, Bud Jeffries. He's, he's really big, big on, on partials. You know, you could see him doing like 500 pound press, uh, 500 pound uh, overhead pressing partials. You know, it carries over like this. Yeah. We don't know, do this stuff because they're bored. They do it because it has a purpose. Exactly, and I, I believe that also it strengthens the tendons and ligaments as well as overloading the central nervous system. So it's gonna keep you injury free in the long run. It'll allow you to handle more volume as a whole. Yeah. And it's just a, a great tool as a whole. So I, I do suggest that you implement some type of partials. Like I said, it doesn't have to be quarter reps, but it could be like progressive range of motion, uh, Paul Anderson style, if that's how you wanna do it. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Anything else you wanna say about partials? No, I think that's about it. Let's move on. Okay, yeah, so uh, the specificity of training lifts. Okay, look, if you wanna, let's say you wanna bring up your barbell military press, right? You want to do a lot of assistance lifts that are going to be as similar to that lift as possible. So you want to change the grips. You want to do as many barbell lifts as possible. Yes. So exa for example, you could do a, to mimic the movement pattern, you know, but it's still very specific to the, to the lift you're trying to bring up. If you're trying to bring up your barbell overhead press, you could, do also, you could also do like close grip barbell overhead press, uh, yeah. reverse grip. Z press, barbell overhead press with bands, or barbell overhead press with an axle bar. Yeah. Or you could do like uh, barbell, uh, you could do dick press, dick presses where you like, uh, you, you start it from here, you, you, you bring the negative down, you know, so you're working your triceps and you bring it behind the neck, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a bunch of variations that mimic, that mimic it, but they'll bring it up. Exactly. What he's saying is you have to use similar movement patterns. That's the best way to go about it. Yeah, you know? basically. Um, so either the same movement, right? Just using, like changing the implement, like the, the, the barbell itself. You can go from a standard bar to a football bar or like a camber bar, whatever. That's yeah. one way of doing it. You can go from pause to no pause, uh, close grip, wide grip. It can even be off different pin heights. It's yeah. still the same uh, movement, you know? There's a lot of ways, but you, uh, generally speaking, 
you have to be using a similar movement patterns. It's called specificity of training. Exactly. And we're doing this to avoid the biological law of accommodation and to avoid it, you don't have to do drastic changes either, you know. You don't have to go from oh, a yeah, barbell press simple. to a dumbbell press. You could go you could go from a strict press to a push press. Oh yeah. Also I wanna you let know? the viewers know uh, a lot of people make the mistake of using dumbbells all the time when you're trying to prove their barbell over a press. I ah, think that's terrible. a huge, huge terrible, mistake. Terrible, yeah. The best way to raise a barbell press is by doing more barbell pressing, but different variations, you know? Can't just marry yourself to one, you know? Of course, like I do, I of course I do dumbbell pressing, as it, but as accessory work. I don't use it like permanently, you know? Like uh, some guys, I'm not gonna name drop here, but they, what they say is alternate between barbell and dumbbell. This is the worst advice you can hear. It's shit. Don't, like they're gonna say, do a month of barbell over a press, then a month of dumbbell over a press. That will not do fuck all for your lift. Nothing. It's terrible. That's it, terrible it's not it. specific enough. If you're going to do both, do it both in the same cycle. Either on the same day or on the same week. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, you want similar movement patterns. That's how you raise overhead press. And I, like I said, uh, band presses, Z presses, these are all movements that are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. This brings me to my next point. So you also want to know... Like, obviously, if you're a novice, you may not know this yet. You know, you just need to get stronger overall. But over time, you're going to you're gonna notice that you have certain weaknesses in the lift, you know? Me, personally, I was always weak at the bottom, you know? The overhead press? Yeah, I was always weak at the bottom, but uh, once it passed the forehead, I, always, really? I, I was always able to lock <laughs> it out, yeah. I'm the total opposite. I'm total opposite, huh? Yeah. So, in my position, I don't need to do more lockout presses and stuff like that, you know? I need to be doing more bottom end work, you know, more uh, Z presses, you know, more... Uh, Pause presses, you know, certain exercises that are really gonna help benefit my situation. Everybody's different. Most people are weak at the middle. Yeah, know? like I'll, identify I'll, your weaknesses. I'll fail all the time in the middle. Yeah. I'll never fail a weight off here ever, never. Yeah. I I, I always get a weight moving off my chest, but then again, I, I do have hypermobile elbows. Like you should see how bad my incline press is. Oh, for sure. For my sure. my elbows, my wrists end up near my balls. Cause it's an incline it's really 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 bad yeah but some people like i said because of uh, anthropometry muscle weaknesses it's gonna vary you know yeah and also depending on how fast you are too some people are just slow so it creates sticking points in the lift yeah and like as far as addressing these points there's not just one or two ways you know like, we'd be ignorant to say that like there's one way let's say if you're weak at the eye level you could start doing your presses and you could just pause the eye level you know it's like or you could just start start dead stop from the eye level like you know? like like you start off from the eyes, you know, or a better way would be doing isometrics because isometrics radiate 15 degrees in either direction. So you can do okay, isometrics, isometrics like and you're stopping I, yeah, at isometric the presses at the sticking point. That's smart. That's smart. That's probably even because it's going to radiate uh, downwards and then you'll be able to blast right through it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, speaking of, uh, OK, we just discussed how now we're getting more in depth. So we just discussed how specificity of training is important. So you want to be doing a lot. You want to incorporate a lot of barbell vertical presses in your program, but that's not to say that you should still neglect the dumbbells and stuff, you know? So don't just do barbells and dumbbells. Yeah. You need the whole nine yards. Me, I do barbells, I do dumbbells, I do landmines, which is pretty much still a barbell. Yeah, it's a bar. It's, a bar. it's pretty much a barbell. I also do a like, mach uh, machine on like my high volume days where I'm trying to get sets of 30, you know, 20, whatever. I'll do like, you know, machine, like, you know, those neutral grip uh, machines. Mm. I'll attach the fat grips, you know. Just pump, just for pump work, you know. And also, what I just noticed too is cables. Cables are also good, you know. Yeah, can you talk about that special exercise? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, like uh, different lifts hit your, different vertical presses hit your shoulders in a different way, you know. You take, you pick, take like a, take a barbell. You know, some parts may be easier than others. You take a, a barbell with a band. The 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 resistance is going to be accommodated more at the top, you know. It's like let's say you take a curl, right? You're curling here. Usually it's hard, hard, hard. But then from right here to right here, it's a joke. You know, it doesn't right. feel like... Joint angles. It's a joint angles. You know, it's uh, specific to that. So what I noticed is I started experimenting with cables because I was looking for more vertical pressing variations to incorporate in the program, you know. So the interesting thing about the cables is that there's constant tension throughout the whole lift. So if you were to compare like a barbell curl where, you know, there's probably like it's probably hard here and it's easy here compared to a cable curl... The cable, you're gonna feel the tension even when you're up here. Yeah, there's still tension. You get it? So it's the same thing with the shoulders. You're gonna, it's just a different way to hit the delts. You know, it's a different way to avoid the biological law of accommodation. My personal favorite variation for the for the cable shoulder press is you go to the push down station. So there's nothing under, there's no no like a pull up bar over you. You know, when you shoulder press, you bring the pin all the way down 
as if you were going to do a curl and you take one of those long uh, neutral grip handles they're really long mm -hmm. and you attach fat grips to it right and then you know you, you adjust the weight stack you clean the weight so it's kind of like a wide grip mm -hmm. uh, cable fat grip shoulder press like the name was like 10 minutes long but it's, it's a really it's a really it's good a crazy lift. lift man it's a really good lift yeah and like how, you, you get, how, how do you deal with the bar with the, the cable hitting you yeah so when you start the lift you have to you have to lean your torso back just a bit but once you press it up you could just put your head forward a bit but i won't lie the cable is a bit close mm -hmm. but don't be an idiot and just ram your face into <laughs> it you know but yeah. it is a bit close yeah but uh it's still a great variation, you know, yeah, so yeah, sure. long story short, don't just limit yourself to barbells. Like the barbells, what we were saying before is that you want them to be your meat and potatoes, you know, mm. you want to include a lot of barbells, but not only barbells, don't, don't take it to the extreme. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for the special exercise that he's talking about, uh, reserve, reserve that for accessory work. Like I would treat a exactly. dumbbell press as accessory work as well as a machine press. That's the general rule of thumb, you know, uh, like, uh, the barbells are usually, yeah. yeah. Like on my high volume days, it's like, you know, dumbbells of cables machines that kind of stuff and one that i even forgot to mention that could still possibly be like a benefit is body weight work like handstand push yeah it's true could you help. know like uh i'm not saying it's an end all be all but like it could help you know it's a good like it's another vertical pressing variation yeah, yeah. Could, help. could help if you put on some ankle weights or a weighted vest and you do handstand push-ups definitely yeah could be sure. a benefit for sure okay so now we're gonna go to alpha's favorite the bands you know yeah. if you want to reach your genetic potential you need some bands so you want to break it down okay what, what exactly you want me to talk about? Um, okay, bands. There's a lot of benefits to using them. Number one, I would say, is the fact that you're accommodating resistance. All right? You have to understand that as you go through a range of motion, the joint angles become more advantageous towards lockout. Okay? So in a squat, your knee, at the bottom, ATG is the hardest position because your knees are very acute. So it's a lot, you know, the mm -hmm. angle, it makes it very difficult, right? But as you get closer to that lockout, those knees open up and it becomes easier to lift because of joint angles, right? But here's the problem. It's easy because of these advantageous joint angles. Now, when you throw bands into the mix, it's not only gonna make the bottom hard, but the top hard as well. Yeah. So that lockout is not gonna be a joke anymore. It's gonna be hard as hell. Th like going back to the example of Phil, where he said the barbell curl, uh, once you get it past the mid, the lockout's a joke, right? But when yeah. you use cables, it's difficult. Well, the bands are the same thing as cables, except you can use it on straight weight. You can mix it in. You can attach it to a bar and you're accommodating resistance so that the whole range of motion is difficult. So on a bench press, I might do uh, 205, right? Uh, and if I slap on some double bennies, it'll be like uh, 290 at the top and 230-ish at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So, and this makes sense because it's the straight weight way of doing it is too easy. Once you get past... Like once you get to that lockout, it's going to be a joke. So bands, it forces you to grind through the entire range of motion. And it also builds explosive power, you know, uh, because yeah. it's, it's very, you, the bands pull you down super fast. So it brings you down faster than the speed of gravity, uh, creates more kinetic energy, gives you a greater stretch reflex in the muscles. So for overhead press, it will give you a straighter uh, stretch reflex over here. And uh, because of the overhead press, the lockout tends to be more difficult than, uh, than benching. Like as we mentioned before, uh, I have trouble locking weights past my forehead. So bands could be a great benefit to exactly. assisting that. And then the reason why they're better than pins is because you're still practicing full range. So it's like combining a overhead press and a pin press into one. I noticed you start, you do it, you did a, you didn't only do it for barbells, you did it for dumbbells and landmines too. I do it for everything, man. Even machine presses, you would probably do it too. You can right? accommodate a machine. Some of them don't do it properly, so you gotta do it yourself. But I use bands on everything, man. And I think that they're essential for maximizing potential. Especially with overhead work. So when did you start using them in the first place? How, how much was your overhead press when you first started using the bands? About 180. 180 or so. So a bit less than a plate and a half. Yeah, less than a plate and a half. Then I started using bands. I took 185 to 5 reps, no problem. And it, would, it just kept blowing up from there. You That's know? crazy. And now I've been using... I'm addicted to the bands. I love them. No, for sure. I can understand. They, they, I find that they help more for benching though. For benching, you find? Every, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because the overhead press doesn't go up as fast. Yeah, it's because overhead press is hard to build. Like I'm at a stage yeah. now where it's it's getting really really tough. Yeah, we're so. gonna talk about like that a bit later. How like it's hard to like mm -hmm. just because you gain weight. What well, fuck? I'll just say it now. Say it. <laughs> just because you gain like the bench press, it's not easy, but in a sense, in a sense, it kind of is. In the, because like if you gain weight, you know, you just get fucking fat as fuck. Your your bench is gonna go up automatically. 
You're going to yeah. store more fat in your glutes. You're going to store more fat in your upper back. You're going to store more fat in your gut. <laughs> Those are the three muscles that are going to help reduce the range of motion and help you bounce more weight off, you know? Um, but with the overhead press, you're not lying down on a bench, you know? You don't have the same, you can't bounce the overhead press off your gut, obviously, <laughs> you know? And you're not really going to put on that much mass, like right here, yeah. your stable shelf. Can't do, yeah, that's right. So what he's saying is gaining weight won't raise your overhead press that much. It won't, it won't. And that's one of the reasons why uh, my strength has been increasing on my overhead press. I'm recomping successfully, but my OHP is still going up. But if I were to do that on the bench, it would be very, very difficult. That's personally why I think the overhead press is a better indicator of pressing strength. I would agree with that. It's a, it's a great testament of overall strength, upper body. You can't, you can't cheat it. You know that the bench, you could art like, like, like a strict press. You can't. How are you gonna cheat that if you can't use your legs? You can't. How are you gonna cheat a Z press then? You can't. You can't. It's legit. It's a really a legit test it's of a like legit dead strength. Stop strength. Yeah, uh, bench press. You can retract the scapula like crazy. Like I could do right now. I can reduce inches of range of motion. Especially with a big rib cage like Alpha. I have a large rib cage, so it's easy. But yeah. on overhead press, my rib cage. Not even a fact. I could just press off the collars and I'm good. Exactly. So it's like, to me personally, like I, I, I've said this a million times. I'm going to keep saying it again. Like a two plate strict press is more impressive than a three plate bench. Yeah. That's my opinion. You know, I agree. Like, I, I do agree. Like you could take some fat fuck and like if he does it, like he just easily just bounce it off, you know, he's still going to be strong. <laughs> I, be I, I've done 315. Um, I wasn't as jacked as I am now and I wasn't a good overhead presser. Yeah, like if somebody, if somebody like uh, strict press is two plates, like they have serious upper part of strength. You're strong as fuck. Yeah. And it usually guarantees a strong bench too, so win-win. Yeah. Not for everybody though. I heard like P. Rubish, like it didn't work for him. But yeah, I know, it depends but on, generally it depends speaking, the most part, as a general yeah. rule, you know? It depends. So let's keep going on with the list. We're going to keep breaking it down. All right. I've been studying even more strongman competitors and uh, I got this tip from Kale Beck. It's basically like... On your road to developing your overhead, your vertical press, you don't want to be some ignorant guy who just does overhead presses and vertical presses. Mm. You still need some horizontal presses, right? Yes. But the thing is, if you look at a lot of strongmen, they don't do a lot of wide grip presses, you know? Wide grip presses are not the best thing for your shoulders in the first place, and in well, my opinion. It makes your pecs tight. It makes your pecs tight, not the best thing. They do a lot of close grip benching. Close grip benching, it's safer for your shoulders. Mm. It's, uh, and it's going to build your triceps like nothing else. And it's gonna carry over better to overhead press for sure. And it's like it's it's just easier on the shoulders. It's, you know? it's so more. It's, like it's better more. Recovery. It's more anterior delt than tricep. In my opinion, I mean, in terms yeah. of chest activation, there's no significant difference. But uh, what happens is the delt and the triceps have to work a lot harder in the close grip position, and it's a greater range of motion as well. And I do find that it does carry over to standard overhead pressing because of the neutral grip. Like you're never gonna overhead press really, really wide. It's yeah, stupid yeah, to do yeah. that. So it is similar in terms of grip width. But you want to make sure, don't make the same mistake I was making when the close grip. Lock out. Lock out. You have to lock, yeah. Me, I, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was touching the chest, but I wasn't, uh, I was going up to here. That's you know? fun, you have to lock out, you have to lock out. Yeah, you know? lock out's most important. And also don't do the mistake of just doing the close grip bench. You got to rotate lifts with that too. So you got to do close grip decline bench, close grip regular bench, close, close grip, grip incline bench, close grip bench advance. You know, got, yeah. do the whole nine yards, yeah. you know. Even dips, like I know some people don't really like dips, but those... Those could be thrown in too because those are good tricep yeah. builder. Uh, but, but yeah, but do realize this is only accessory work, and accessory I, I, don't, work, I, don't, yeah. I don't necessarily believe that it should be used year round. Like I, I barely even close grip bench anymore. But I, I think that every once in a while you could throw it into your training and it could give you a little boost, you know. Yeah, we're not talking about like. Uh, like don't. I, in my opinion, you should not be close grip benching every fucking week. That's just me. Yeah. I I don't even think you should put it in your ten Or if, or if you do it, it would have to be in like a the way that you're doing naturally enhanced right now. You'd have yeah. it three times a week, right? Yeah. So it will be on like the moderate volume day. I would put on the vo yeah, the high volume day, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So it's like, uh, make sure you add some close grip benching. And you know, it's like, if you want to get the big pecs and you, you want to get the big bench and the big shoulder press, make up your fucking mind, you know? <laughs> you have to pick one, you know? So it's like, if you still want to bench, it's fine, but just do a close grip bench. So you're still getting bench, and also people think that close grip benching won't build their pecs. It, yeah, it does. It does. It really does. It does. It's a myth. It's just like uh, you want to explain them why the close grip builds the pecs. Well, it's pretty common sense. Physiologically, there's no difference in terms of pec activation between a wide and a close. And last I checked, when you flex your pecs, you're like this. Are you not close grip? Do you flex your pec out here? No. Yeah, Bring yeah. your hands in. So look, you can squeeze your pecs at the top of close grip bench. You can squeeze it very easily. Yeah. At the bottom, because it's a deeper range of motion, your pecs stretch out more. Why would why the fuck would a close grip bench not build your chest? What it does do is build more chest, uh, more tricep and shoulder. Which is what we want anyways. Yeah, but it still builds your chest. 
like real talk, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, like uh, the close grip bench, that's really the meat and potatoes, a tricep work that's going to help with your overhead press. But you don't want to just limit yourself to that. And I've been guilty of this in the past, not going to lie. That's probably why my overhead press isn't going up as much as I want it to. I've been slacking a bit on the, um, the direct tricep work. So I'm talking push downs. I'm not just mm -hmm. saying regular push downs, saying band push downs. You want to do the neutral grip, underhand grip, overhand. Yeah, all the variations. Do all the variations. Uh, also, uh, what, a bunch of extensions, you know, overhead yeah, yeah. dumbbell Ex extensions. Yeah. In particular, you want overhead because that's what happens in an overhead press. Yeah, you know? one arm overhead extensions, one arm overhead extensions with fat grips, you know. Like you yeah, wanna but that's going to help the most. I feel that. that any exercise in which you got to bring your hands behind your head is going to be the most specific for raising your bench. Like if you, no, you over press. Like if you want to build a flat bench, the best thing to do would be a lot of uh, decline barbell extensions to the, to the forehead, nose, or throat, as well as flat and uh, incline, right? And doing yeah. a lot of elbows out extensions because it's horizontal. You're working the same plane of motion. Uh, the same could be said for overhead pressing. You want to be doing overhead extensions to build the lockout strength, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like, uh, you want to follow progressive overload on those too, you know? You don't want to just stick to the same weights on your, on yeah, your tricep Yeah, like, like try to get your overhead extension to 135 for reps. Yeah, and That's going to raise your OHP. Exactly. And if you're, um, if you find like your elbows really start to hurt when you do heavy extensions, the simple answer, you do your vertical presses or your close grip bench before to, for to reps. To lubricate to, the elbows. To pre-exhaust uh, so you don't have to use as much weight on the extensions. Yeah, also doing a lot of uh, soft tissue work would be a benefit as well. Like take a band, put it on top of a power rack and just rep it out really, really fast. That's gonna help out yeah, with your yeah, elbows. Yeah. So that's one way of doing it if you have uh, really bad yeah. pain. Like that's, I've been doing that a lot recently. Like, but I used to do my extensions first and my push downs after. But now I do my push downs first and my extensions after. Yeah. I feel that it really it eliminates a lot of the joint pain. So that's one route that you could take. The weight's gonna be a bit less, but it's worth it. Yeah. If you have uh, if you have a lot of elbow pain, then I'm dropping a book soon called uh, 101 Tips for Mighty Wrists and Elbows. It's all about like people like safer ways to train your your elbows and wrists, you know, like uh, for people who get like wrist discomfort, elbow pain, like I break it down, talk about general tips, what lifts to do, what lifts to avoid, special exercises, how to warm up, how to cool down, stretches, all that mm. kind of stuff. And I have fun. one for shoulders too, you know, I have one for shoulders, elbow, wrist, knees and low back, you know, those will be coming back, come, coming out like uh, the next few months, but look out for that. Yeah. So if you look at a lot of strongman competitors, one of the things that stands out the most in their physique is their upper back. Their upper back, rear delts, like that whole like, the whole thickness back there, because of all the, the deadlifts, all the rack pulls, you know, all the farmers carries, all the, all the upper back work that they're doing, it gives them that look, but also it helps with the overhead press. If you have a really strong upper back like Kale Beck, mm -hmm. like it's more, it's a really good, it's a really good base, it's a really good foundation to press off of. Yeah, you know? I agree. You know what I mean? So it's like, make sure that you're not just doing pull-ups, you know? Like, uh, a lot of people think, oh, well, uh, the, the shoulder press is like, a, it's a vertical press, so I just, all I have to do is just vertical pulls to complement it. Mm. And you still want to do vertical pulls, for sure. I, I, would, I would agree with that, but you also need, like, some, uh, some upper back work. Get your yeah. upper back really strong, and get your rear delts strong. Start training your rear delts with direct work, you know? Start doing, like, band face pulls. Start doing rear delt swings heavy. Uh, pff, reverse pec deck with bands. I don't know, uh, rear delt kickbacks, it's like tricep kickbacks, but you're just keeping your arms straight. Uh, it's a bunch, you know? Yeah, and, and, also, and also the horizontal rows are good too because it's going to make your upper back thicker. It's going to get your upper back thicker. It's going to improve your posture. Yeah, the, but exactly. If you and it's better, gonna, you're going to get less shoulder pain from doing a lot of rows. Yeah. So it's going to keep you in the game longer. That, that, that's why it's important, you know? It's not necessarily the same movement pattern as an overhead press because it's horizontal, but it's going to give you a better base. It's going to enhance your posture, which could give you better leverages and, of course, keep you injury-free. So it's important that you still do some horizontal rows if you're doing uh, vertical pressing. Yeah. It's important to also stay healthy throughout the years because a lot of people, like, uh, me personally, I, like, I don't even remember the last time I got a shoulder injury. I did get it back in the day, and that's why I wrote the shoulder book, which was actually the first book that I actually wrote. Uh, I actually got injured doing a three-plate dip. Three plates? And I couldn't press for, like, a year. I couldn't press for, like, uh, ten months. That sucks, man. Yeah, yeah. This was years ago, though. This was back in the day, and, like, uh, so whatever. Hmm. So it's like you want to you wanna also be doing like your, Alpha always talks about this, you know, connected tissue work, soft tissue work, all that kind of stuff. You know, I like uh, on my off days, a few days a week, you know, when I'm in my living room watching TV or whatever, I'll just like take a lacrosse ball, you know, like just put on the shoulders, you know, roll on it, you know, foam roll the upper back. I like the rumble roller and stuff like that. You want to keep your shoulders healthy, you know? Yeah, yeah. And this is going to bring me to my last point. It's like 
if you want to really get good at the sh not good you want to get amazing at the shoulder press you know and all the variations not just one or two you need to make it a priority for the long haul you need to make it a priority just like the power lifter prioritizes the bench throughout his whole career yeah same thing you know so it's like this isn't like some like oh uh four to six week advice you know to get your shoulder pressed up it could be but for the most part it's like if you want to get really really big delts as a drug free lifter you need to prioritize your vertical presses throughout a long period of time exactly like dude when was the last time i benched i don't even remember it's been like seven months you close grip bench in a video big deal you know that's it i mean i've done maybe one variation in seven months i'm serious about this shit and you should be too if you want to raise your overhead press, you really, like we said at the beginning, you have to emphasize it. Run a vertical yeah. pressing system, um, and you should be good. Like, that's what, to me, that's how I program everything naturally enhanced. It's mainly uh, vertical pressing, and then I throw in some horizontal, like, very, very, like, not too much, but it's part of the accessory work. Yeah. But vertical pressing, uh, incline pressing, I would say, raises your overhead press as well. But, uh, yeah, man. I have the smallest chest ever, like, probably one of the smallest chests on YouTube, but you probably can't Can even you tell. tell. Do a... Pose. Like you look at me from the side, like uh, yeah, he looks thick as fuck. I don't have a big chest, you know. It's like ever since January first, I haven't benched. You know, last time <laughs> I last time I benched was I did a decline bench in like uh, late December. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but at the same time I'm doing close grip work. No, I but have. I haven't done like a wide grip or a regular grip bench in months, you know. And like if I never do it again in my life, I couldn't care less, you know. Yeah, fuck it. So it's like, you shouldn't stop being so, like, it's kind of ties into what he was saying yesterday. It's like, stop, like, we're just going to put the nail in the coffin with this video and not talk about it, you know? Like, stop caring so much about your bench if you're trying to look big. It's a drug for lifter. It's not going to work. Big pecs isn't the way to go. The whole, like, no pecs, no sex is bullshit, you know? Like, you need big delts. Yeah, you know what, man? I'm going to say this. <laughs> it's a bit off topic because we're talking about overhead press, but fuck it. Um, <laughs> I feel that even guys who do a lot of push-ups have a nice chest. Those you know the calisthenics guys? Their chest ain't bad. It's doable. If, if you had a chest like that, a calisthenics chest, but you ran an overhead press specialty program for your <laughs> your uh, your OHP, vertical pressing, you would look yoked. Real fucking talk. You would look yoked, yeah. Real talk. And also, what people don't talk about is the overhead press, it does build your upper chest, you know? So it's like... It really if does. If you were to see my upper chest, like it complements my, my, my traps It's and pretty that. good. It's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't have like some skinny like collarbone action. Like, there's a bit of meat around it, whatever. It all, so tie, like, it all ties in, guys. If you want to have one part of the chest, it's the upper chest. And the overhead press fulfills that, so who cares, you know? Yeah, fuck it. Also, the overhead press, like, uh, hits your traps a bit. Because if you do overhead shrugs, you know, you get a similar, like, you won't get, like, big traps with doing overhead presses. But you'll definitely get more trap stimulation, more indirect trap stimulation from an overhead press than a bench. Of course. You'll get way more upper back stimulation than doing a bench. Get more long head stimulation than doing a bench. Yeah, so you know more what? More side delts. OHP can make your arms look pretty big without having to get like a three Especially if you do it with bands. Especially if you do it with bands. Especially with bands. Like uh, even doing uh, fucking lockout presses. Yeah. A, a lockout, locking out weights, like the, the partials that we discussed previously, will work the long head your tries. Yeah, and like also crazy. my favorite exercise for the long head is the dicks press. Like check it out on YouTube. The one, remember, like you, you start from yeah, this. Yeah, really You cool. unrack it. You bring it to your eyes. Boom, boom. Boom, like it, there's constant tension on the triceps throughout the movement. Yeah. You can tr experiment with close grip, wider grip. That's hands down the best like uh, long head exercise. Yeah, and, and it builds your overhead press. Like crazy. I would also say overhead lockouts behind the head is good. That's pretty yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you set it to, to the middle of your head, like right here, and you just lock out behind your head. It's very, it's very, it's gonna build your extensions with one arm mm -hmm. as well as your overhead barbell extensions because it's a similar uh, plane of motion. Try yeah. it out. I think you'll like it. People, people need to get their standards up. You know, it's like uh, it's. I see it all the time, guys. Like you'll see them, you'll see them bench three plates, and but then it's like how much. Then you, when it comes time from the shoulder press, they're doing like a plate for reps. Like yeah, a plate is the really most bad. Like even my man uh, Johnny Candido, which I hope to see soon again. I really like this channel. He uh, was benching three fifteen, but his overhead press was one thirty five, and he said it was difficult at the time. He did. He did. He did. And he his did. and I think he also did like a three twenty five pause bench. But a 180, one rep max, overhead press. So and that he didn't have the best delts either, so... Exactly. So, what we're trying to say is that you can have a strong bench, but it won't necessarily guarantee you a strong overhead press or nice delts. Exactly. Boom! So, we just put, so the, I think, I we think just that put the nail in the coffin. That puts the nail in the motherfucking coffin. That's it. That's all you need to know. So, hopefully... 
So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this guide. Uh, I like helping you guys out as well as Phil. And if you want more information like this, uh, please leave some comments down below. Yeah. Uh, whatever topics you like to cover. And if you want like some really like no bullshit advice, go on the Fit World blog, fitworldexposed.com. Click on the blog. Uh, Phil has interviewed countless like world champions in several different sports. Uh, strongman, powerlifters, bodybuilders. Like you Coaches, got some, like you got some world records. Been getting doctors. I got Stuart McGill. I got like uh, I got some crazy people coming on. Yeah. Show. So if you really want to get informed and some no BS information, Alpha Destiny approved. Go on the Fit World site. I mean, it's fucking legit stuff. Real talk. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Talk about some similar stuff that he talks about. Yeah, we, like, we have a very similar. But, uh, yeah, exactly. That's why we get along. You know, it's like I put my own spin on it, whatever. For sure. If you guys, if you guys like this video, if you guys learned a lot, which I hope you did, maybe if you could even comment. We could even like help you out on some other lifts. You know, rack pulls, rows. Yeah, whatever. Whatever, whatever you guys want to see. Dedicate or, a whole video to it. Break it. Yeah, down. like a whole video on the rack pull. You know, or a whole video on the barbell or penley row. Yeah, you know? a whole video on the deadlift. Whatever. What do you guys want to see? Whatever. Let us know, and we'll address it next time. So that's it for today. Great talk, Phil. All right, take care. All right, peace, guys.